guys, I've just purchased a new uh, Vito Pro Pack Tech LC bag. I've taken advantage of the new spring promotion. Um, whereas you buy any tier 1 bag, you get a free TP5B, which this is here. Uh, as you probably gathered from the intro, I do a lot of fencing within my business. And uh, I like to have a mobile fencing bag, uh, which I've got set up here. I will run through all the tools in a second. Right guys, just quickly, before I get into the tool overview of this, if you could uh, give the, like, the video a like at the end of the video, that would be hugely appreciated. Uh, it just helps keep the video, you know, current and live. Sorry for asking, but it, it does help the video's performance. So, thanks again, we'll get into this now, thank you. This is my old fencing bag, which is the TP4, just a mobile bag. Got on really well with this, to be honest, I've had this, been using this for a good few months. And really, really liked the fact that I had a mobile bag. Uh, a couple of downsides, one downside being that the, the base isn't plastic on the TP4, it's just a canvas base. Uh, obviously when you're fencing there's, you know, there's wet ground, there's puddles, there's mud, um, it's just not ideal setting it down. Although I did used to just sort of clip it on top of, you know, fence posts or, you know, so it was mainly off the ground, but it is a bit of a disadvantage. Uh, I'll be honest, really happy uh, with the way this performed, um, but as always, uh, there's always things that extra things that you need to carry that was no room in this far which is where the the tp5 comes in the tp5b sorry so here we are here's the way i've got it loaded up um it probably looks well over packed here looking at it but to be honest i do i do need all these tools and my fencing box is a, i use a dewalt ds400 and it's ridiculously heavy you know so you know if, you, if you're doing a fence it's a fair distance you know from the van it's this is ideal i mean i love my tp4 for this so this is perfect um, there is a couple of new additions to since my last video. Yeah, I actually done a video on the TP4, how I had it set up. But just through experience and you know having more room in here, I can actually add some more useful tools, which I've done, um, which I'll run through now. I mean, I'm aware that there's probably nobody out there in the world that will use a TP5B for what I'm using it for for a mobile fencing bag. But this video is pretty much just to give you an overview of what I use on a daily basis fencing and what the TP5B is capable of and, you know, what it can carry. What I do, the first thing I like about it, you know, I've just picked it up there. I mean, you can shake it about, jump up and down, it's, uh, and it's really compact. Everything's tightly packed in there, um, it's just perfect. Guys, I'll, I'll do a really quick run through of the tools uh, using this. I do realise that nobody will be interested, uh, or not a lot of people will be interested because it's purely geared to fencing, which is quite an unusual use of the bag. Um, but, you know, I'm assuming a lot of you guys like your tools, so there's, there's some pretty interesting tools in here, uh, which I'll show you. So I'll go through the, the new additions first. Uh, so firstly we have the, these are the Nipex small bolt cutters. Uh, these are a new purchase for me, I only bought them a couple of days ago. Uh, I'm, I need to do a review on them, but I just haven't fully tested them out yet, so I need to test them out and then do a video on my thoughts. But. Primarily, these are used for cutting the heavy strainer wire, um, so you know, it could be four, four millimetres thick, five millimetres thick. Uh, that's what these are for. Uh, just Nipex pliers, uh, just standard pliers, uh, which are always handy when fencing. Uh, this is a, a fairly new tool for me as well. It's not a new tool, as as in a new. Uh, tool that I've never used before. I actually had an old Draper one of these that I used before and loved it. But this is even better. Uh, I'll put a link up there to the review I've just done on these. Just an excellent tool. Primarily used for removing staples and old fences, you know, cutting wire, you know, twisting wire. Just a brilliant tool, mainly for deconstructing, you know, old fences, strainer wire and chicken wire and things like that, which is often the case when you're building a new fence. Yeah, I went ahead and bought a new Stabila, a Stabila boat level because it just fits so nicely on the side of the, the TP5B. Um, again, if you've seen my review of the TP5B that I've done before, I'll leave another link there. You'll see my thoughts on the, you know, the way this level fits in the side of it. It's just such a good fit, ideal, as you can see. Another fairly new purchase is the, the Negisaurus uh, screw remover pliers uh, from Engineer. I'm going to do a review on these as well. These are you know, fantastic. I've just been playing about with them the last couple of days and they're as good as everybody says. Uh, really good. Um, just a quick introduction. The, the jaws are used to 
if you've got a rounded off screw, you just, the, the way the jaws are designed, you know, with the curve there, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if that'll focus, but you can actually grip onto the screws and turn them out. And fencing, you do round off quite a lot of screws, especially on rails, you know, and it can be a pain to get them off if you need to move them. So this is a worthy addition to this. I'm gonna buy a couple of sets of these and put them in other bags as well. Just a fantastic tool. Uh, PZ3 screwdriver. Um, Again, just for backing out screws when you're putting rails in. Um, sometimes, as I've just said, you need to move the rails up and down, so back them out with this to start with and then use the impact driver to get the screw fully out. This is a new addition here, which is a demolition hammer from DeWalt. Um, I've actually been using this for fencing, but this was in my Tech XL as a maintenance hammer, but I stole it <laughs> because I love it so much and started using it for fencing. And it's just a Brilliant hammer. I mean, if any of you guys can justify it, it was about 30 pounds, the best hammer I've had, you know, so. Using it for a few months, uh, just persuading me to get the demolition hammer from DeWalt. This is fantastic. And um, this will be going back into my Tech XL. So this is the way I've got the hammer set up in the bag. Um, it was one of my subscribers that actually told me about this. I didn't think of doing this, but you've actually got the belt, the belt loop on the bag there, where you can just uh, shove the hammer through. So. Thanks for shouting out, guy. Uh, whoever it was, I can't remember who it was. I'll find out and leave it in the comments. But it's a good way to store the hammer. So, so this is the Dewalt demolition hammer. Um, I haven't had it too long, so I haven't used it too much. Um, but the main reason I bought this is you can fit. There's a standard fencing rail here. If you can see how the hammer fits over the rail there, and you can just you know obviously lever them out and just helps deconstruct fences. These are 87 millimeter thick rails, which are pretty standard here in the UK. And this hammer just fits perfectly. And you can see how tight a fit that is. Plus a really good sturdy hammer. You know, you've got the nail remover on the side, so it gives you plenty of leverage. It's 22 ounces, so it's a heavy duty hammer. And the length, you know, it's a fair, fair old length, so a lot of leverage there as well. And really extremely well weighted. So. It's a, a brilliant hammer. Um, again, I'll leave links in the description to all these tools, but if anybody does a lot of demolition, it doesn't have to be fencing, you know, even if it's framing or, you know, anything like that. Um, this, this is a great hammer. Another fairly new addition to this uh, fencing bag is the Nipex uh, pincers. Basically used, I bought these for, sometimes when you put fencing boards on, you need to actually take them back off and move them for whatever reason. Um, you know, and then you're left with the nails protruding through like that, so these pincers are excellent, you know, just grip like that and pull the nails out easily and quickly. Importantly, it doesn't mark the wood. You know, some fences that I do, the, the wood is, you know, it's quite a nice wood, it's not rough sawn timber all the time, and these, these don't mark it. Whereas I use a big claw hammer to get nails out like this, it can mark the wood. Yeah, it's a useful tool. So anybody that's interested, these are the Nipex Carpenter's Pincers. Come with a little hammer there. Uh, profile there for pulling nails out, just a good tool. Standard fat nut, Max knife for ripping open uh, cement bags. We've got the Marshalltown string, this is all I use now for fencing. Um, this is the best, the best string you get in my opinion, it's a braided string. It is actually quite expensive, it's about £15 a roll, but it just doesn't stretch, you can get it really tight. It's just a great, great all-round uh, builder's line, so that's the Marshalltown line. I'll leave a link in the description to that one as well. Uh, Carpenter's Pencils, that's the main marking tool I use when I'm fencing. I do sometimes use Sharpies if the wood's dry, which we've got here, um, but normally the wood's pretty damp, you know, when you're doing fencing, so heavy-duty pencil like this, ideal. On the side here, we've got the, the specialised carpenter's pencil sharpener. It's just a lot easier than using your Stanley knife, you know. It's safer as well, so we've got the sharpener for these. A couple of small boxes of screws, um, just for that initial uh, part of the job, if you're fitting rails or fitting boards. Just carry these as opposed to carrying all the multitudes of screws that you need. Uh, cheap Stanley tape. Again, I don't use any high quality tapes when I'm fencing because the, the tools just get beat up. 
So it's just a Stanley Tylon 8 metre tape. I mean, I think they're only about 5 quid or whatever, so if it gets you know, broken or damaged in any way, they're easily cheaply replaced. Swanson Speed Square. Um, this is a good quality square, this one, um, but you do get cheaper ones for 4 or 5 pounds. Whereas I think this is about four or five times the price, but just you can feel the quality with this. Really robust. Um, primarily I use it for cutting rails or cutting top of fence posts or, um, or marking, should I say. Ideal tool. Uh, I've seen a other couple of guys using these. I was a bit sceptical, but it's just a plastic glove holder. Just a little clip that clips on the side of the bag. Um, you squeeze this, these tabs together, it opens up and you can, you know, get your gloves in there. I mean, when I'm fencing, I use a lot of gloves and just use it, I just tend to use cheap sort of disposable type uh, gloves. I just, it's a quite light in my hands as well, quite light using those. So. Forever losing them or forever lying in the ground getting soaking wet, so these are ideals for storing them inside the bag. Again, I'll leave a link to these, I think. I, was, I only paid about £2 for this, it's just ideal. This is the wind bag on the side, it's an air wedge. Uh, I primarily use these for putting them under gates, you know, getting the height set right on a gate or the left and right side. Um, I've actually got a clip of me using these in action, so I'll, I'll stick that in now. Right guys, um, I'm just trying to equalise this gap here uh, along the, the gate and the post, so what I've done, I've ended up taking the screws out of the hinges here and I'm using a, a wind bag here basically an air wedge, so when I pump this, just by squeezing this, it's moving, pushing the gate over, which is putting this tighter to the side here, and then I don't know if you can make out the gap now, it's pretty even all the way down, so I'm happy with that, so the wedge is holding the gate in place, so what we'll do now is get all the screws and the hinges, hopefully that should get good, hopefully, so all we'll do to deflate the wind bag is press this button here. So give that a press. It's so released. We'll pull that out and hopefully it yeah. a nice even gap now all the way down. Yeah so it's just an air wedge. Pump the handle, it pumps it up and to deflate you just press the button. These are excellent. Just a brilliant tool. Um, it's actually like a spare pair of hands, you know, when you're trying to set a gate square, for instance. Brilliant. And on the side, I've just got a, my normal earplugs. I've got specialised earplugs here that are moulded to my ears, so they're, they're great. Just usually when using the nail gun. Small Stanley pry bar. Uh, just if there's any sort of boards I'm trying to get off, or rails even. Um, if I need to do it fairly carefully, I'll just use this and use that. I've got a big rough neck bar as well, which I'll sometimes carry in this bag. Yeah, but I just haven't got it in today. And the only thing I carry in the pocket in this bag is PZ, PZ3 bits and PZ2 bits. Um, these are the two types of screws I use. So the PZ3 are for the rail, the big screws for the rails, and PZ2 for, you know, if you're screwing uh, ironmongery on gates or sometimes fitting boards with, with the screws. It's always important to carry tip uh, bits with you because they get chewed up on your fencing, believe me. Uh, so, perfect. That's it, guys. That's pretty much what I carry in this bag. Right, guys. Well, hopefully it's another overview or another use of the TP5B. Um, you can see some of the things you can carry on it. Just, uh, I, I love these bags. Um, a lot of people maybe think they're just slightly too big as a pouch, which is well in a bag, but um, not for me, I just, I just think it's great. It just feels, feels good when you lift it up. You know, just hang it up in the van in a hook, hang it on a fence when you're working, all your tools are to hand, it's light, mobile, no, it's brilliant. Right guys, if you're still here, uh, please give the video a like at the end of the video if you can. Um, if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. I've got a, a lot of videos to the Vito bags. I'll leave a link to the playlist up there. Um, I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks again, guys. Cheers.